The Egyptians are very good at breathing life into statues. I don't mean so they could move, but so that they had a certain amount of sentience and you could get answers from them. Um, then, of course, there are all the usual things like uh, health. Um, I mentioned earlier in the talk about uh, getting a bone stuck in the throat. And my initial reaction to the Egyptian procedures for health were, ooh, I don't think I want to touch any of those. But, and this is a real thing that happened to me, a friend of mine got a bone stuck in his throat, went to the hospital, they put forceps down his throat, they x-rayed him, they did all sorts of things, they couldn't budge it. So I said, come on, just as a joke, let's try this. And I did the procedure, and one of his friends gave him a whack on the back, and out came the bone. Now, it was probably the whack on the back rather than the procedure, <laughs> but that's one of the few uh, pieces of medical magic that I've tested from this period. Okay, um, foreknowledge and memory, the idea knowing things that are about to happen, well, that ties up with divination as well. Improving your memory, this is uh, quite a, a useful thing. Um, I think, how are we doing for time? That, that's all I want to talk about, but I hope that you guys have got some interesting questions to trigger off. What is the relationship between... Uh, is it the same spirit that was invoked 2,300 years ago or uh, last week in Singapore? Well, if you call, let's use the real example, Boel, um, nowadays the reaction will be very similar to what the ancient uh, greco egyptian got when they called Boel, the same spirit. Um, if you're going to ask me the theology, is it the same spirit and is it still alive? I don't know. Is it the grandson of the same spirit? I don't know. Um, is it just a name, label, and some abstract force behind it? I don't know. I tend to think of them as individuals, and I tend to think of them as the same individual, simply because then it doesn't clutter my head up with all sorts of worries. Um, I just treat them as if they were the same individual. Uh, there are some classic texts where demons have said our name is legion, meaning we have plenty of different names, and that is also possible. Um, if I can draw a modern parallel, uh, when spiritualists are using a Ouija board, they, they get the spirit of, um, I don't know, uh, Athanasius Kircher. The spirit says he's Athanasius Kircher. You know pretty certainly that he's not. Uh, so certainly with dead humans, spirits will often imitate them. Uh, is it good Uncle Bob? Um, yes, the spirit says, I am Uncle Bob. Um, so I'm not very keen on Ouija because it's a bit imprecise. And again, if you're talking to dead humans, you might as well talk to live humans. They don't know very much more. But leaving the humans on one side and the dead humans on one side, um, spirits, uh, I tend to find that the same name calls the same sort. So, um, Sesengeng Par um, Farangis behaves the same way today as he did in the uh, papyri, for example. So, the question was, um, what's my stance on reincarnation and the ancient Egyptians? So, I want to be slightly controversial and say that the ancient Egyptians we're not keen on reincarnation. Now, by that I mean the purpose of the mummy was to keep the spirit out of incarnation so they can enjoy the summer lands or whatever, enjoy being an ak and not come immediately back into another body. I'm sure they believed in reincarnation, but um, their procedure was quite the opposite to, say, the Hindu procedure, which is burn the body now so you get reincarnation very rapidly. Um, the Western attitude of burying the body makes the gap between reincarnations much longer. Uh, you can see that I believe in reincarnation. I'm actually married to a Hindu girl, so I have no choice. But <laughs> <laughs> apart from that, I genuinely do believe, because I've seen a number of cases where um, children who couldn't possibly know have known details about what happened. You know, children of this height telling their parents where their previous incarnation was murdered, where the body is, where the two, you know, and so forth. And it finds out to be true. So that works. But the ancient Egyptians had the reverse attitude. They weren't in a hurry to come back here. 
they wanted to stay. I won't point upwards because I'm not sure where the Tuat is. Maybe it's down, maybe it's up. But they wanted to stay out of incarnation and enjoy the pleasures of that. <coughs> Anybody else? <to> that. <coughs> Your friend in the circle will be in no more danger than you are. Um, if the circle's done properly, that will keep them back. It seems very weird that something drawn on the ground and consecrated will actually keep an entity back, but it will if it's done properly. So you no need for, you know, as long as your friend doesn't put their elbow out of the circle or dash out of the circle to have a quick uh, glass of water or something, in which case they bring it on their own head and that's too bad. As long as they don't do something stupid like that, they will be safe. Um, and it is always good to have somebody with you. Uh, the more, you know, you need room to move around. Some people ask me, can you do a six foot circle? And my answer is basically no. Certainly not if you've got somebody else there. Minimum is nine foot radius and, um, sorry, nine foot diameter. And I use a nine foot radius circle, which gives me plenty of room. Okay. Yeah. Um, which was mentioned on the, the web of evoking Malfas by uh, an, an African magician who, by the sound of it, wasn't sufficiently skilled, finished up on his back in the circle choking. Now, the easy answer is that he obviously did it wrong. Uh, the more complicated answer was that if he finished up suffering inside the circle, then he definitely hadn't done the circle properly and he wasn't wearing any kind of protection. But he was obviously good at invocation, or evocation rather, because Malfas or one of his um, legion has obviously turned up. He was sort of saved by somebody else in the circle. Yeah. Normally, if you have a scryer in the circle, it's not the scryer's job to save the guy doing the invocation. Um, it's the invoker's job to deal with the spirit, and the scryer's job is to see what he can see. Um, when, invo when evoking spirits, there's two basic ways of doing it. One is simply into a crystal or um, into a scrying media so that you can see and communicate with it. And the other one is to keep it outside the circle where it's not going to interfere with you at all, um, which is a very, the much more sensible way probably of doing it. Okay? Yeah, I just wonder.